Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I've started to build a rundown modernist shopping precinct for behind my viaduct. I've got the first shop front in place and have the general lay of the land all sorted out. In this video I will show you how I got from a bare patch of baseboard to the start of a shopping precinct. Join me then for layers and layers, starting to make a modernist shopping precinct. I had an irregularly shaped hole to fill, and the ground is lower on one side than the other, and it raises from front to back on the left. I measured this all and made some notes as I went. For the overall shape though, I used a different technique. I took a photo from above, with a ruler visible in the picture. I imported the photo into Inkscape, and then scaled it so that the ruler's measurements matched those of Inkscape. I then just drew around the edge with the line tool. After adding some horizontal guidelines, I printed this onto cheap copier paper, cut it out, and to my surprise, it fit perfectly the first time. Or perfectly enough anyway. I covered this with a glue stick and put it on the layout. Another measurement just to be sure, and a raising road to think about. The ground here needs to be flat as I don't want a wonky tower. Eventually, I had a series of ribs drawn in Inkscape to match the guidelines glued onto the baseboard. I printed these and stuck them to card. I could then use PVA to align them onto the guidelines. This left me with a surface that dropped gently from High Street towards Bridge Lane, and was completely flat in time for where the tower will be. I cut the same shape from half millimetre card and then used Uhu glue to fix it to the ribs. I added a slit where the building will be so that I can keep the base of the building flat for easier arrangement later. I topped it off with another layer of half millimetre card. This left me with a surface that dropped from the exact height of the High Street baseboard, but that was a mistake and I'll come back to that later. So the building's frontage is based on elements of the front and back of the indoor market in Shipley. Having decided on the width of the concrete pillars, the rest of the building could be arranged to be the exact length of the space available to me. A quick test print on copier paper was cut out and dropped into place. Doing this makes making adjustments really easy because you don't have to keep blunting your knife on bits of card. Once I had it right, I printed the base layers twice onto sticky label. I included window apertures on both copies, but only one copy has this opening here. This will be a recess containing some concrete art. I printed the window frames too, ready to be stuck to acetate later. Once cut out, you can see the recess here. And because these are just base layers, you don't need to be too neat. Overcutting the corners helps get a crisp right angle in the window holes. The first two layers of texture were added as a single sheet of paper. I included the bricks on the lower layer, and concrete on the upper layer. The recessed back was glued on first, and then the upper layer was added to the upper base, just using PVA. The recesses were overhanging with texture like this. This meant I could slice them, score them, glue them, and fold them round. This leaves a lovely brick-edged hole, which on top of the back looks like a recess ready to hold some concrete wall art. The next layer of concrete was glued to another sheet of paper to make a layer two sheets thick. Once this was cut out, I used watercolour paint to colour the white paper edges. This left me with a layer that looks like concrete that will just sit proud of the bricks above it. I glued it carefully into place with PVA. That looks like what I was going for. The final layer of concrete pillars needed to be deeper, so I cut these from photo paper and glued them onto half millimetre card. Finally, I painted the edges grey, and glued it to the front. Wonderful! That's just what I was looking for. The windows were made using my usual sticky label method. I glued them on with PVA, and then added the rear card layer that I prepared earlier. I did it like this, so that the windows weren't too recessed into the frontage. And I'm happy with it. Now for more layers. I decided to make the shop front from two layers of waste acetate. On one layer, I arranged the signage. Special offers, huge discounts, and a sign saying only two children at a time. The other layer was the doors and windows. I stuck both onto acetate, and then, with my scalpel, I cut all the horizontal lines right the way across. Then the vertical ones right the way across. Then the posters. I did these one at a time to avoid scratching the visible parts of the glass. Next, my favourite bit. The resulting holes were peeled out to reveal the glass and the bits that were not poster were peeled away. This left me with a piece of acetate containing posters and a piece of shop front that I had coloured blue with watercolour paint. When this one is dropped on top of the poster one, 
it gives a lovely impression of posters being stuck to the inside of the glass. This is so much better than the sellotape method that I used in Fashion Focus and Last Brooks. I stuck the shop sign to yet more layers, three layers of paper in fact, to complete the frontage. At this point I realised that since I would be dropping the building's front on top of the ground, I should have made the ground flush with the top of the pavement, not the top of the baseboard, so I had about a millimetre of space to fill. I squashed a piece of paper into the space and drew the outline of the piece of precinct that needed to change. I then cut out enough layers of basic copier paper, each one progressively smaller, to leave me with a little slope from the top of the card to the top of the pavement. Something like that. With the first two layers stuck down, you can see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to raise the ground in a gentle slope to meet the top of the existing high street pavement here. Now they're all in place and the gentle slope looks just right. When I drop a paved texture on top, you can really start to see the effect I'm going for. And the paving. With apologies for my channel members, you've not got early access to this video because I've been bothered by the paving for the last several evenings. I've drawn almost 20 different ideas, printed 8, and I still haven't decided what it's going to look like. But the early test photographs are really starting to show the potential. The atmospheric photos that I'll be able to take here should be excellent. Speaking of atmosphere, I've got something really atmospheric to add next. It's based on a photo that I first saw over two years ago, and which I've been so looking forward to bringing to Chandwell. Please join me next week to find out what that is. If you don't want to miss it, why not use the subscribe button and press the bell to receive a notification when the video is ready. My channel members will find out what I'm up to in my weekly members update on Sunday. Why not consider pressing this silver button if you're interested in becoming a member. Until next week then, here's another video you may enjoy. In the meantime, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.